next thing or no. Oh yeah, so this is something that you know there was it's been talking about for like a couple of days that I wanted to like, you know, check into. Um, but basically that since um I mean for years now there have been issues with the Dragon Ball IP, uh, like um multiple people are trying to like fight for the rights of it, trying to figure out who like controls of it. And uh, with uh, Akira Toriyama's passing, rest in peace to him, it's even more drama, like, over it, like, who has control over it. Um, uh, basically, uh, there is a person by the name of, uh, what is his name? I, I feel like I'm going to butcher it. Uh, where's his name? Where is his name? Uh, Yoku? Hopefully I pronounced this right. But basically, Yoku... Um, he is somebody that Toriyama has, like, trusted, like, a number one person, like, he's trusted over at Shueisha, and, like, he's really, truly for, like, like, Akira Toriyama and, like, the series, the worker series that he's, like, created, at least from what I see here. Hold on, I need some music. Sorry. Um, um, basically, let's just read this here. Um, since the serialization began in 1984, Dragon Ball has remained a highly lucrative IP that continues to captivate people according to the app research company Sensor Tower. The two Dragon Ball mobile games, including Dragon Ball Z Dokken Battle, which began distribution in 2015, has surpassed a worldwide revenue of 5 billion yen. Um, but it looks like correction here to this guy, so it's 5 billion USD, a uh, total global revenue by 2024, February 2024. Uh, the movie Dragon Ball Super Superhero released in 2022 achieved a global box revenue of 13 billion yen, or maybe that's USD. In Saudi Arabia, there's a theme park where this is basically going to be like, that's has a Dragon Ball theme uh, going to happen. You know, in March, Akira Toriyama passed away. Um, and so, you know, but even with his passing, Dragon Ball is still a very like popular series. Um, uh, but apparently, a certain person in charge went independent, and this certain person is Ioku. Hopefully, I pronounced it right. Akio Ioku, who's a former head of the Dragon Ball Shueisha's Dragon Ball Room. Uh, they went independent uh, with several slight subordinates and established a new company called Capsule Corp Tokyo, um, named after you know the company in Dragon Ball. Uh, and so basically, he's meaning he's. The company's aim is to manage creative activities and handle intellectual property rights. Um, yeah, Mr. I Ioku became the head of like Dragon Ball Room in 2016 after serving as editor chief of V Jump. Um, a situation insider recalls without consulting his su superiors, Ioku utilitarily decided to make a firm adapt a film adaptation of. Uh, Toriyama Sensei's Sinland. He always focused on serving the author for better or worse. Uh, at the same time, uh, there's criticism from anime production companies and TV networks that he had a condescending attitude. In addition to the evaluation, progress was lacking in the collaborations with the metaverse and AI that the higher ups were anticipating. As a result, in 2022, he was reassigned to a new business apartment. This unwelcome transfer became the trigger and within a year a yoku yoku went independent uh taking over the role of choyama spokesperson on behalf of suesha uh yoku's actions risk uh raised the risk of suesha losing its dragon ball rights uh toyama sensei was also dissatisfied with yoku being removed as he trusted him the most chairman maru Hai hayuchi hopefully i pronounced it right now. it's very hard to read these uh the small letters um, uh, Suisha even went directly to Toriyama's residence in the Aichi pre Prefecture, um, but he couldn't persuade him to stay, uh, said the aforementioned Suisha insider. Um, this put Bandai Neko, uh, who, which have been making a fortune from the games like Broken Battle in a difficult position. Yoku, who was Toriyama since a spokesperson, became independent, but the rights to the manga were, were managed by Suisha. It was unclear who who to consult regarding matters related to the original work. Uh, okay, I see. See how they do things over there, that's interesting. Yeah, I can see how that causes a lot of problems. Cause it just seems to me that 
you know, based on this aircraft alone. Because I know that there's a lot of, like, resurgence going on with Sandland. Like, they got, like, a game coming out, and I believe there's something... Well, no, the game's already out. Um, but I believe there's something else happening as well that for the series. I think they're doing, like, a anime adaption, if I remember correctly. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, yeah, it just seems like, you know, from, like, other people, like, this... Ioku is seems like you know, like it says the person the go-to person for uh Toriyama stuff looks like like they're basically like best friends and um and uh actually hold on let me let me check on this man Akio Iyoku what has he done oh that's what he looks like uh uh let's see what you know how like what his influence on Dragon Ball is as the editor who works for Shueisha um, editor in chief of V Jump and Cycle uh, Jump is editor in chief. Uh, was planning coordinator for the 2011 adaption of Dragon Ball Episode Broadock. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, he took part in a 30 minute uh, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods discussion panel. Okay, I feel like. Wasn't he doing other stuff? Hmm, interesting. Alright, I thought he was doing like other stuff. I thought he was like an editor that Toyama is now, but you know, that's, that's so cool though. Um, yeah, it seems like he's been a big influence into like the series. Um, but yeah, I can see like how this would be like confusing for like third party people like Bandai Namco trying to figure out what's who they should go to I mean honestly personally for me I would go to um I Ioku because he's the person that Toriyama trusted the most for like his series or like basically like they were like I, I don't know if they're best friends but you know you don't just go around saying that you trust them the most out of like a country out of my country a company um but legally seems like Shueisha owns the property um so I but I could definitely see how it would cause problems because you know they have a certain way of doing things over there um this last paragraph here says meetings about Dragon Ball were organized very very vaguely uh with all relevant parties being invited and subtly included both Yoku and Shueisha are rep representatives making the coordination extremely stressful said the aforementioned by Dynamico Insider of course Toriyama's passing occurred amidst the battle over rights. The discussion continued without the original author, and the disputes have been ongoing and still remain unresolved. Makes sense. Delta has a note a Suisha employee. Uh, some industry executives are looking towards a resolution that involves the family saying it depends on how the family feels about it. Uh, the question remains who will ultimately take the lead in managing the massive IP, the future of the um, bogged down battle, which is not fitting a shonen manga remains unclear yeah this definitely sucks especially after his passing yeah I, I mean in this situation i would definitely say it's up to like the family what they decide to do um yeah it's definitely up to the family what they decide to do and uh i'm sure everybody you know would do their best to you know live up to the name of like dragon ball because dragon ball is definitely like a very influential influential series um, but yeah, it sucks to see that, you know, Toriyama's work has been, like, all this crazy stuff has happened with him. Um, but I wonder, like, apparently there's been, apparently Suesha has been the reason of, like, you know, like, some decisions that has happened that hasn't, like, worked out with, like, Dragon Ball. Um, that's what I heard some people do. Um... But yeah, ooh, I wonder what you guys think, if you think uh, Akio Iyoku is like in the right about this stuff. Well, let me check out some other articles here.